Rust. Probably one of the most frustrating games I've ever played. It's one of those games where you can just lose it all in a matter of seconds. And once you've lost it, it's hard to find a reason to stick around. And because of this, it's one of those games that I only come to once every couple of months. I'll either go big or go home. Most times I tend to just go home. I spawn in, I die, I die, I die some more. I mean, this is one of those games where you just kind of die a lot. Especially if you just started off, you'll farm up about 3,000 wood. About to start getting your first base down. Boom, you're dead. You lost it all. Have fun. You farm up some more wood. Boom, you're dead. You finally make a base, but you realize it's only got a wooden door because you have no metal yet. Someone sees this. You get flamethrowered. You lose your base. They're still burning it. They'll never take me alive. <laughs> this is the Rust experience. But this time round, though, somehow against all the odds, we managed to become raid ready in two days and completely take over half the map with just two of us. Yeah, it's crazy experience. Let me talk about it. So here we are, the start of the story, where we, where we start, the start, the, this, this, <clears throat> this is the star of the story. We run around as naked, we kill people with spears. This is what I like to call the naked face, where we just don't care. Someone looks at us funny, we'll stab them. You called us a you bitch. Us Who's a the bitch now? Who's bitch? a bitch now? Oh. Bitch. I'm a bitch now. I'm a bitch now. <laughs> <laughs> what have we done? Uh, me. Oh, Look at me. This is how democracy <laughs> dies. Uh... Eventually though, this gets kind of tiresome and we move on to bigger and better pastures. So we pack our bags and we move to a snowier region. I do this fairly often. The reason why I move to the snowier areas is because there's less nakeds around there, which means less competition. But less competition doesn't mean no competition. This is a double-edged sword. You're going there to expect bigger clans, more optimized people ready to win the server. They literally want to take over the server and this is where they go to do it. Thankfully, once we got over there, we didn't really bump into anyone other than one guy by the name of P Licker. Yo, P Licker's active. His house has got torches in. But uh, we'll get to him in a moment. So we got there. We set up base. I hid it under a nice little rock and I even made it look pre-raided before I logged off for tonight. I added this little door here and I put this little sign. So it looks like someone has already raided us. Am I a fucking genius or am I a fucking... It's like a 500 IQ play right there. <clears throat> so the next day we log on. The base is still up, thankfully. And we roam around. Jack up McFarlane again. Oh no. Yeah, I'm there. I right don't here. No, if I can pick this up. <laughs> I don't it, that, that can't <laughs> be. <laughs> <laughs> the <way you're> <laughs> I'm gonna fall! <laughs> I hate you. Now, today is the day of Licker and his friend 911 was an inside job. All of today, we bumped into these guys. A lot of hustle and bustle. People running back and forth from the harbor, which is nearby. There's a dome. I did a lot of dome runs. We're trying to get raid ready. We're trying to get the items that we need to be able to raid other people and steal their goods. But unfortunately, we keep bumping into these guys. Right, the recycler. Now, we got the better of them 90% of the time, but again, this is a game of risk management. At the start, they were running around with just spears and bows. Once we killed them 10 times, they pull out the big guns, the SARS, and we don't stand a chance. I headshot him! I've got a saw, bro. Oh, he killed me! Now, unfortunately, my man Connor, he got killed a lot by them. And because he got killed a lot by them, they managed to steal his one possession that he really loved. It was a mace. They stole his mace. These guys, they literally stole the only thing he had. So that was it. The, the fight was on. We were very annoyed. And uh, I just really hate the name Picker. Now, over the next couple of hours, we needed to be able to get a SAR and explosive bullets to go and raid these guys. Unfortunately, we were having terrible luck at the dome, and we just thought, you know what, let's just go and head over to the other side of the map, buy these two items, and get out of there. So that was the plan. We headed to the other side of the map. First time, we got the explosive bullets. Then we made the second trip to go and get the SAR. Uh, mate, excuse mate, me. Mate, we we want to buy. We, we want to buy. We want to buy that saw, mate. Buy that saw, mate. It was a very close one because this guy was closing down his shop for the night, and uh, we kind of scared him in the bushes. So I'm sorry for you, uh, but thank you for getting us our saw. So that was it. We got back home. We were raid ready. We had all the items we needed to go and raid. <laughs> and 911 was the inside job. There was also another one or two, but I forget their names because their names didn't annoy me as much as because I just, I really, God, I, I hate that name. <clears throat> 
So this was it. We just had to get enough sulfur and enough metal to craft the bullets we needed to raid these guys. And uh, thankfully, we managed to do it in the space of a couple of hours. At this point, uh, Dicker decided to go to bed. They did do a lot of upgrades on their base before they got off. Dicker's base, I repeat, they have been busier than biz. It's huge. Which was very unfortunate because it means we had to go through an extra few doors. But unfortunately for them, we made it in. Oh! oh! Boys, boys. And Connor even got his revenge by grabbing the one thing they took from him and crushing their head with it. <laughs> and to send their regards. Oh! Oh no! So that was it. Our toe was dipped. We were ready. And uh, it was time to take over the rest of the server. So the next day I logged on. I'd done some more dome runs. I was hoping to get some C4. We did manage to get a lot of scrap. So uh, C4 was becoming a reality very soon. And I noticed there was a base not too far away that was active. So I went to go and check it out. And uh, he was he was coming out the door as I was there. And you know what? <coughs> this motherfucker spat on me. This guy spat on me. Who spits on people? The fuck, man? So that was it. These guys were getting raided and we were going to do it um, within the, the next hour. So there we go. We got the C4. We got the shit. And I got my goddamn revenge. No, oh, fuck. <laughs> no one spits on me and gets away with it. You dirty bastard. Who's spitting on who now? Now, we were really riding high at this point. We had managed to get two raids done, take out two people that were really annoying us. But there was still one. There was still one base that was really, really annoying us. I like to do a lot of dome runs. There are four amazing crates up top, which rarely fucking spawn anything good in. But I still like to do dome runs nonetheless. Now, these guys with the tower kept on shooting me. Oh. While I was trying to do my dome runs. And uh, we, we didn't like that. And we weren't having any of it. So we raided these guys too. Let's go, go, go. Oh. Mm. Mm, boys. Oh, shit. They got incendiary rockets and bolters in here. Oh. Oh, so many guns. So we had managed to take over pretty much all of the snowy area. We took out the three main factions that were holding it. And we became the big dogs. There was no one else in the area. So... For the next couple of hours, we decided that we were going to end things on our own terms. We were going to fully gear up, head back to the mainland, and just dominate everyone in our path. Now, this is what I like to call the uh, the oppressive stage, where we just we just kill all the nakeds. <laughs> Why did we do this? That was so senseless and horrible. Yo, hey, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, how's it going, Beardo? This one's mine. It's all yours. <laughs> <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> you see one, boys? 150. Oh, he's down. Take it down. Beg for me, boy. Beg for me. <laughs> Now this was coming to the end of our rush journey. We had an abundance of items that we just kind of didn't really care about anymore. We'd spent the last three or four days playing the game, which is normally enough for me to scratch the itch. And now that it was scratched, we wanted to go big. So uh, we went to the only place we expect a lot of players to be, and that's the sound of gunshots. So if you ever hear gunshots in this game, it tends to mean a lot of people want to try and get some guns, or they want to try and kill someone and steal their guns, or steal their loot, or steal their beans. It's people, people are going to get taken down when you hear gunshots. Shots. So we headed over there. We made even more gunshots. Oh, 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 I'm super low. Oh god, I'm crashed. Oh, I'm down, bro. I'm dead. Fuck. He moved. Is that you walking around? Nah, it's him. Alright, well, he's on the body. I don't know, I, I can't see anything. I can just hear it. Mine got done. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> 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 now make him go find it, bro. 
Maybe they find it, maybe they won't. You want some? I'll give it to you. I thought the best way to go was by the hands of this boar. You want to scrap your old geese? Come then. Oh no! You come, come then! Tell all you got! Tell all you got! I'm not going out like this! No! <laughs> not after all I've been through. I go out on my own terms. So thanks for watching. I'm Monkey My Cry. This has been Monkey My Cry TV. And this is the way I go.